Hey, good morning, this is CB. I'm gonna show you today how to install a GFI that feeds other outlets. We've got four wires coming out of this box, fed on the left and fed on the right. We need to know which set of wires goes over here for to be the feeder off our GFI, but the wires that are coming from the box, the main uh, circuit breaker panel, we want to go on here. So we need to do a test. The easiest way to do that, make sure the power is turned off, obviously. Set your meter to ohms and grab the black wire or the white wire on this side. Touch it to where the black or white wire goes over here. Hmm, no continuity. Test it there. Looky there, we got continuity. So we know that the wires that are fed in on that side of the box are actually looped over and feeding this. It's important that the loop on your wire be facing like this one is where it goes in here and comes around so that when you tighten your screw down it's not trying to chase the uh, loop out from underneath the screw pretty simple but an easy mistake to make okay we got our wires connected that are coming from the circuit breaker panel time to connect our wires that go over to feed this other outlet. The screws down here are covered up with a piece of tape and that piece of tape tells you, hey, these terminals are for feeding other outlets. Take that off, let's hook our wires up. Well, normally you're, you will hear people tell you, hey, remember the gold screw is the black wire Silver screw is the white wire. Well, you can remember that, but what I always remember is that the small spade is the power, the black wire. The large spade is white, the return. All right, we got all four of our wires on. We're ready to put the ground wire on. Okay, we got all our wires on, including the ground, which is the whole point of the GFI, your ground fault interrupter. Now we're ready to put this outlet in the box and test it. All right, as you can see, our green light's on. Our outlet it's pretty much temporary, temporarily installed because I know the uh, tile guy might be coming today and they're gonna want all these outlets power killed and turned out so that they can lay tile around them. But take a little tester like this, get for a few bucks at Lowe's, Home Depot, and it has a little guide on there to tell you um, what you got. And we're showing that we have power to both outlets. So now when we test the ground fault, the lights go out down here. So we know that the ground fault is controlling this entire circuit. It's back on. One of the reasons I wanted to make this video is I heard two people say that uh, you can make a grounded outlet by taking a normal outlet like this, um, and replacing a two-prong outlet that's ungrounded simply by adding a ground wire here and screwing it to the back of the box uh, on a metal box. That is absolutely false. The National Electric Code 2014 uh, suggests, and it does suggest, each municipality can decide which parts of the code they want to enforce or adapt. It does say to run a ground wire from your ground terminal in your metal box, this isn't a metal box, but in a metal box, to the back of the box. But that wire is supposed to be connected to the ground wire that we connected that goes all the way back to your circuit breaker panel. According to code, it's not even supposed to terminate in a sub panel. It has to go back to the ground leg in the main breaker panel. 
So you do not have a grounded outlet simply because someone puts a wire on a ground stud and puts it to the box. And if you use a simple tester like this, it will tell you that you do not have a grounded outlet, even though someone may have hooked it up with a third wire where it looks like it's grounded. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.